Welcome to ITK Barcamp. Today we are going to go through an example illustrating how to use command line arguments in C++ programming. This is a very basic introduction to C++ programming. We are going to start by creating a directory for putting our examples. We use the mkdir command. Uh, we are doing this in an Ubuntu Linux machine, so we are using Linux commands in the bash shell interface. And we call these um, command line arguments. This is our directory, then we use the cd command in order to go inside our directory. And we have this uh, empty space. Uh, we can use here the vim editor. You could also use any other te text editor to write this code. And this is the name that we are going to give to our example file. Let's start with the main function. So this is the entry point for most C and C++ programs. Uh, it is common to use a main function uh, without arguments when you're not capturing the parameters that are being passed in the command line. But what we want to do in this particular example is that when the user type commands in the console, it should be able to pass arguments to the main function. Um, by default, the main function will accept these uh, arguments as a series of strings and uh, the first argument to the function will be the number of strings that are passed. And that includes the name of the program itself. So usually you want to uh, keep in mind that you will have the number of parameters that you pass plus one, the first one being the name of the actual program. Then the second argument to the function is an array that contains strings. So it's um, typically called argv just is a traditional name. You don't have to use that particular name, but it's what you would most commonly find. Uh, so those are the two arguments. The first one indicates how many parameters are being passed, and the second is um, this symbol indicates that this is an array, this is the name of the variable, and this is the type of the elements in the array. So we have an array where each one of the elements is a pointer to chars, which is typically how we represent strings in C and C++. We uh, open the, the function with the uh, curly bracket and we know that we are going to close it at some point so we can anticipate that. And we know that we have promised to return an integer. Uh, we did that promise here in line number three with the integer uh, argument on the back of the main function, so the enter point. And because we know that we are going to use some um, messages for printing, we are going to include here the iStream header. So iStream contains the declarations for functions that manage the passing of strings, or especially characters, uh, to the console, to the standard error, uh, and we'll use it to print messages in the screen. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is to look at what is the number of parameters that we receive. Uh, we're going to do that by using the stdcout class, and we pass to it, um, put, a, put a message indicating number of parameters number of arguments. And we put the value of this first variable, the argc variable, variable that is a, an integer containing how many arguments were passed to the program plus one because uh, we include the name of the program itself. And we add the std end l uh, symbol that indicates that we are going to pass to the next line when we print this message into the screen. Now, because we are receiving a collection or, or a series of arguments, we're going to print one by one. Uh, for that, we are going to use the for command. We create a variable i, integer i, starting in zero, and we are going to go through each one of those arguments. So we go counting up to arc c, incrementing by one, and we create the body of that for loop, inside of which we are going to print the arguments that we are receiving. Um, so we can put a little bit of a message here. This is the argument that we're receiving, the counter for it. We can put an equal sign. And then we use the name of the variable that, that is associated with the array of characters. And we use the subindex i. So we will be printing subsequently um, argv0, argv1, argv2, etc. until we print all of the parameters that are being passed to the program. 
So this little program is essentially uh, just listening to the commands that you pass in the command line and printing them back to you in the screen. We save this, uh, we invoke the C++ compiler to compile this code and um, by default it's going to create an executable called a.out uh, you will see here a.out this is the executable if you didn't want to use that name you could have invoked the compiler with the dash o option and give you another name maybe uh, cli command line arguments uh, cla command arguments to something that is easier to remember let me remove then the other executable that we have there to avoid confusion and now we have our two files here okay so if I invoke the CLA program now without any arguments it's going to tell us that we actually pass one argument that first argument is indeed the name of the executable so remember that is always passed to the program regardless of whatever uh, you put in front of it uh, let's invoke it again with other arguments let's say we pass the number uh, 4 and the word uh, yellow and horse and maybe the number 14 so now our program is indicating that we pass five arguments um, again remember we pass four arguments and the name of the program counts as argument number zero um, in the process of printing we have the name of our executable as the first argument and then one after the other we have the other arguments um, each one of those arguments were passed as uh, a string, so as a, a collection of characters to the program. Uh, when we are writing this uh, for here, uh, for our C++ program, this is not an integer, it's really the character that represents the number 4. And same here, this, uh, this is not really the number 14 for our program in the current form. This is the string composed of two characters, the character number 1 and the character uh, of the number 4. Uh, it is common that uh, you may want to actually capture these as numbers and to do that you may have to convert them into um, actual integer variables let's do that in this example so um, let's assume that this is the number you know, just the variable a and we use the function a uh, alphanumeric to integer so a to i is uh, a default function that will make this conversion from uh, a string into an integer and we are going to pass the second argument remember that the counting starts at zero so arg v0 is the name of the executable and that's not the one we want here we want the first argument and being passed to convert to an integer and now we can actually um, let's say do an operation with it so uh, we could print it multiplied by some number we can do 2 times a and print it And because we are using this function that is not part of the um, um, default iostream library, it's, it's, it's a different type of function, uh, we need to add the stdlib uh, series of declarations. So this will have the declaration of what this function is expected to take as arguments and what type of value is returning, what, uh, what is the, yeah, the return type of it. That we know it will be an integer. We invoke the compiler again and this time we are going to write this in a CLA2 name and we get here a, uh, an error indicating that stdlib is not what we needed to invoke so this is where we need our man page And the man page tells us that um, I have to actually do it with the std leave.h. Let's try that. Make that modification in the code, and now we try compiling again, and this time the compiler is happy. 
So let's take a, a quick look at how the um, program ended the end. So uh, we actually needed to add .h to that particular header. In the, in the process, you can see that the man page, the man command is extremely useful when you're looking for declarations of functions that uh, you may have forgotten a little bit how to use, as I just showed. Okay, now we have the second executable, and we're going to pass a similar uh, series of commands. So CLA, I can actually recover the previous command and just change the name of the executable here. So we have the uh, CLA2, the name of our executable, and the first, uh, sorry, the same collection of four arguments. We expect to see that our program is going to take uh, this first argument that happens to be the four, is going to multiply by two, and print it here. And the conversion from a string to integer was done by the i, a to i um, function. Now you may find cases uh, if instead of 4 we write here 4.5, you will notice that the number is still 8 because the function that we are using is uh, converting from integer to, I'm sorry, from a string to integer. If you needed to manipulate float numbers, then the function that you want to use is a different one, is the a to f function. So in this case, we are going to do both conversions. We are going to do the still the conversion to integer, and then the conversion to float, um, both of them for the same argument. So we are still doing um, the conversion with the first one. And here we explain a little bit why one will look different than the other. So in the first case we're going to convert as a float, in the second case we're converting it, I'm sorry, in the first case we're converting it as an integer, and the second case uh, we are converting it as a float. We compile our program again, and then we can execute it again. And something went wrong because our output is still 8. Uh, let's see, we have some error in the code. So this is, uh, of course, uh, it did, I did copy pasting, which is one of the scenes in programming. Um, I should have used the float declaration for this variable b. And now I can come back to the code. Compile it again and run it again. And now we have the correct answer. So uh, we have the 4.5 multiplied by 2. Um, to review what I did wrong, this is how you learn. Um, I made the mistake of copy pasting this line and making one change that came to mind and forgot, forgetting to do the, the full change of the line. Uh, to avoid those mistakes, you should not do what, what I did. You should not uh, be doing copy pasting. You should be writing each line directly. So you can actually focus on what you really need for each one of those lines. Okay, so this uh, concludes our session for today. Uh, thank you for listening.